Hi, this is Professor Fernandez. We are going to work on class notes B in lesson 18. So for this example, I want to show you how to find the orbits and draw the face portrait of this system using what I call the dy over dx method in the previous page. So that method is going to have us construct the differential equation, first order differential equation, given by y dot over x dot. And you know, just as a quick little um, intuitive derivation here, dy over dt divided by dx over dt. Um, if you think of the dt's as actual quantities that we can measure, and you think of this as a fraction bar, then we can uh, uh, f uh, cancel out the dt's, leaving dy over dx. Um, this is by no means a rigorous derivation. As I said, it's just more intuition to give you some sense of why you should believe the fact that, indeed, the slope of the line tangent to the orbits um, of a plane autonomous system is given by the ratio of y dot and x dot where um, that's you know x dot and y dot are the equations of the system so um, what i'm going to do here is take the y dot for this system which is minus 2x times x squared plus y squared plus 1 and then take uh, the x dot and divide that down here we can see that because this quantity is never zero, we can cancel it out. If it were zero, if either x dot or y dot contained some quantities that were zero, then you would want to do a separate analysis of the equilibrium points or the things that you missed in canceling these things out. Uh, so that way you get a fuller picture of the um, orbits. But in canceling this specific term out, we're not missing anything because it's a non-zero term. So what's left? So we're left with dy over dx equals minus 2x over y. And this is a type of equation that we've solved in the first unit of the class. Actually, it's a separable fold. So what do I mean by that? Remember how that goes? I, I believe from lesson two, um, we try to get all the, I'm going to you know, use the what I call the physicist way of solving it in that lesson. I'm going to get all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other. And then I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to their you know, um, corresponding variable. So on the left-hand side, I get y squared over 2. Right-hand side, I get minus x squared and then plus some constant. And when I add over this x squared, I get x squared plus y squared over 2 equals this constant. Already, this tells me a lot, right? So you might recognize this as the equation of an ellipse. Um, so I can I can think a little bit more about what that looks like. Um, I can just look at what happens, for example, if x is 0. Then y squared over 2 is that constant c. Implies that y would be plus or minus the square root of 2 times c. On the other hand, if y equals 0, then up here, I just, I just get x squared equals c. So x equals plus or minus c. Uh, and sorry, I should have said square root in both of these, square root of c. So you can see that um, the y values are going to be bigger by square root of 2, which is, I don't know, 1.4-ish, than the x values when you're looking at the x and y intercepts. So this tells us, long story short, that the um, y-axis is the major axis, right? So whatever square root of c is, y is just a little bit uh, above that, root 2 square root of c. And here's minus square root of c, and y is just a little bit below that. Whereas the x um, values for when y is 0, the x-intercepts, are square root of c. And because it's an ellipse, then we know that the curves, um, the orbits for this system, look elliptical. All right, so that's a very quick rundown of how you would know that these are ellipses and that the major axis is the y-axis. And because all of the orbits that we found up here have exactly the same center and the same you know, major axis and minor axis, and all they differ in is this number, which controls how large or small the ellipse is, as, as we can see over here. Um, then I'm just going to draw a bunch of ellipses over here of differing um, sizes, if you will, right, with all y as the major axis. Again, we haven't talked about directions. How do we know are these traced out counterclockwise, clockwise? We will do that in the next video. But let me just show you 
scrolling back to the actual system here, let me show you the direction fields that will confirm what we have found. So I've put it in here already. Um, and this is the system up here. This is the system over here. And it's actually a little hard to tell that they're elliptical, although you can kind of see it from this picture. Um, but again, I keep saying this for this website, make sure that you're on Runga Cut of Four. And I have um, already plotted these, so I'm just gonna tap anywhere and it's gonna um, generate for me this really crazy uh, uh, orbit. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to show this in the video so that you know you didn't go off and, and try this and, and you know run into this craziness. Um, this is again an artifact of the numerical scheme we're using. Right? So what's happening here? What's happening is that there's not there are nonlinearities in the system. This is a nonlinear system. You know, for example, you have a y cubed if you multiply this term times that term. Um, times the y, and then you also have this x squared times y. So this, the, the solver that's being used here is, is doing the best it can to solve this nonlinear system. And you can see that it captures some of this circular behavior, elliptical behavior, but you know, obviously in general it does a really poor job of capturing what it should capture, which we know mathematically should be the elliptical behavior. And it really doesn't help if I if I tap anywhere else, you know, I try here, now it's not even an ellipse, it's just a, a random blue line somewhere. Right, so um, even though Runga Cut of Four tends to be a very um, accurate solver, it's not helping in this case. One thing you might try is uh, making the h value here smaller, so we can try making this 0 0.001. That just makes for a finer attempt for the website, excuse me, to try to um, solve the system. So if I then try that's a little better i don't get craziness um, but at some point you know the the solver just has trouble continuing the solution so that's why you get these curves that are not closed so that one worked out um and and these other ones seem to be working out but for these for these small x and y values it looks like it's having trouble um, because what you're doing here is you're, you're taking very very small values like 0 0.001 and you're squaring them um, so they get even smaller and it, it can be hard to deal with with that level of smallness numerically. Um, but anyway, so this is again another cautionary tale to not believe too much of what you see from this applet. Um, instead to do the math and then use the applet to confirm the math. And if, if uh, the applet is showing you something different as I did, try playing around with the settings, certainly the type of solver that you're using and, and this which controls the how coarse or how fine the solver is is doing its job of numerically solving the system. Um, but to get back to the class notes, this is a, a how an illustration of how you would use the dy over dx method that, I, that I'm calling it to come up with um, the equation of the orbits. You divide y dots, whatever function that is, by the function on the right hand side for x dots. And then that is, you know, because of how we set this up. Always gonna throw you into a first order ODE problem. I will tell you that most of the ones, at least in this class, that we try to solve using this method will be separable, but you know you might run into other types of first order ODEs um, in, in trying to solve this. Anyway, you will, uh, if you can solve them, find an equation that is also generally not of the form y equals a function of x, right? So again, you'll have to think a little bit, remember some of your conic sections. This is the equation of an ellipse. Um, you'll have to remember the equation of a standard equation of a circle uh, and also the hyperbola. So those are the kind of the three big ones that will show up.